Welcome everyone, my name is Ilva Tare, I'm a non-resident senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's Europe Centre and this is Balkan's Debrief. Bosnian citizens were called up to vote for new representatives on Sunday, October 2nd. However, immediately after the polls closed, the office of the High Representative, led by Christian Schmidt, imposed a new election law requiring immediate implementation. When it appeared that a new era in Bosnia had begun with some reformists seeing progress, Schmidt's uh, move sparked public outreach. Damir Marusic, uh, senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's uh, Europe Center, is here to give us a quick reaction to the recent events after the polls and what to expect uh, going forward. Damir, thank you for being with us. Ilva, always good to be here. What are your main takeaways from these Bosnian elections? Um, Ilva... Uh... It's a, it's, it's a difficult election to read. Um, in many ways, uh, not that much has changed despite all the drama. Uh, the biggest drama uh, was the defeat of uh, Bakir Izabegovic, uh, who is the leader of the SDA, the so-called Party of Democratic Action, which has uh, uh, dominated uh, Bosniak politics for, for quite a while. Uh, he lost to Denis Pechirovic, uh, the candidate of the Social Democrats, um, who was himself being backed by a coalition of uh, 11 uh, reformist parties. So that's the actual reformist story for Bosnia. Um, outside of that, um, not that much has changed. Uh, there's still a question of whether Milorad Dodik's victory uh, against his opponent to be uh, president of Republika Srpska will hold. Um, there are questions about voting irregularities and there may be protests in the days ahead, but we'll be watching that to see what happens. Uh, apart from that, actually, not that many uh, changes happened that uh, somewhat belies the claim that this was a revolutionary um, uh, big change election. Um, in fact, uh, Izetbegovic's party, the SDA, uh, still retains the majorities uh, in, in parliament. Um, and, and another way to read this election, rather than the victory of reformists, is in fact uh, the deep entrenchment of... Um, of ethnic uh, patronage parties, uh, which have been a mark of Bosnian politics for a very long time. So many criticize, and we have seen uh, this uh, Twitter rage against uh, Schmidt's decision, describing him as an elected, uh, unelected official who acted against the will of Bosnian citizens and gave more power to nationalists, a move that many see as an illiberal ploy. Demir, what do you think? Has the West lost its plot in Bosnia? It's a difficult question. Again, um, Obviously, uh, Mr. Schmidt is not an elected official. The office of the high representative uh, is not an elected position. Um, and in fact, Bosnia uh, has had uh, this kind of imposition, this kind of uh, outside Western ruler, a viceroy, uh, since the war ended. Um, so as a result, uh, you know, the criticisms that, that uh, he somehow uh, is something other than that, uh, you know, I mean, that's what he is. He is an unelected official. And his mandate is, in fact, to uphold uh, the Dayton Accords. Um, in doing that, you know, I think narrowly read, uh, one could, I suppose, uh, defend what, what he did there uh, on the terms of, of defending the Dayton Accords. Um, but the timing, I, I, I have to agree with the critics, uh, really is... Uh, um, uh, problematic uh, to do it just as the elections closed uh, to uh, just basically create to really highlight uh, the extent to which um, these inherently undemocratic uh, powers of his um, to use them on the even of an election. I think it sets a a, a bad optic at at, minim at minimum, and uh, it may for for foretell uh, some level of of unhappiness and instability in the medium term in the country. Let me just say, though, at the same time, it's early still. We don't know how this is going to play. Uh, the Brits uh, and uh, the United States have come out with very strong statements backing uh, uh, Mr. Schmidt and his decision. Um, there was some uh, talk that the Europeans, the EU representation, was not uh, pleased with the decision. But nevertheless, they have uh, backed down and have not released any sort of uh, strong criticism. And we're seeing all the, the international partners basically aligning behind Mr. Schmidt on this. So, you know, let's see how it plays out. Uh, it's maybe possible that, that uh, Mr. Schmidt has gambled correctly and that this will just be accepted and will go down because it's not clear what the alternatives are for it being basically accepted. It will be 
imposed, as it were. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, questions of legitimacy are real. And uh, to do something like this with this kind of timing, I think opens up uh, potentially a Pandora's box going forward. You said it uh, earlier that it, there may be a chance that a protest may, may start in uh, Sarajevo and in, in Bosnia. Will this affect the, um, the work and uh, the, um, the office of the high representative there? I don't know. We have to see what uh, what kind of protests there are and how this actually plays out. I mean, uh, the other question is is uh, the formation of government, uh, whether uh, this uh, impacts that. Um, the uh, stated reason why the decision was made by the Office of High Representative was, in fact, to ensure that, that Bosnia is able to form a government. There has been a lot of blockage on uh, many levels uh, in, the, uh, in the years leading up to this. And his status pur stated purpose in doing this at this very time uh, was to not announce it ahead of the elections and have it be an election issue, but do it right away uh, as soon as the elections were done in order to facilitate the formation of a government. Um, it, it Again, uh, you know, reading newspapers, uh, talking to friends, uh, reading Twitter, uh, the hot takes are flying very hot right now. Um, and one can get the impression that uh, it's going to be very difficult uh, to move forward. But uh, I really have to say, it, it really does feel a little too early to tell to see exactly how this will play out. Uh, can you tell us why are Bosnians against opposing this new election law, claiming that it gives Croats uh, a permanent monopoly? And what is the Croats' stance on these changes? Well, uh, the reality is, is that uh, Croats in Bosnia uh, and uh, Croats in Croatia have, in fact, been campaigning for these kinds of changes uh, for, for quite some time now. This has been a live issue in, in Bosnian politics for a very long time. Um, and in fact, it was, I think, the, the, uh, the fact that the, the, uh, the demands and the, uh, the worries of the international community that uh, after this election, the Croats may start pulling out permanently from uh, institutions and making Bosnia completely ungovernable, uh, that may have forced their hand to act. Uh, again, I stress on the merits, um, the OHR is supposed to protect uh, uh, the Dayton Accords and the Dayton Accords uh, do uh, enshrine uh, this idea of three constituent peoples, uh, the Croats being one and providing certain rights for them. Um, you know, on a short interview like this, uh, we really could go on for hours. And quite frankly, I'm not even the right person to, to have this conversation with about uh, the wisdom of, uh, of Dayton as a constitution, uh, whether uh, the, the rights of one of the constituent peoples have been meaningfully impacted and whether uh, a true uh, liberal um, non-ethnic democracy is possible under the constitution as it currently exists in Bosnia. Nevertheless, um, the reality is uh, that uh, the mandate of OHR is to protect, to, is to protect Dayton, and uh, they acted in that way. Um, does it entrench ethnic politics uh, in, um, in Bosnia? Well, in the sense that uh, ethnic politics have been entrenched in Bosnia since Dayton, yes, certainly. By reinforcing Dayton, it does exactly that. Um, and uh, quite frankly, uh, you know, speaking as someone uh, who really does want uh, the best for Bosnia, that's not a good thing. It's, uh, it's, it leads to quite a dysfunctional politics and, and, and keeps the country uh, uh, trapped uh, in really toxic dynamics. Um, but nevertheless, uh, here we are. Uh, we're back to uh, Dayton being the law of the land uh, in Bosnia and uh, the international community backing that. And are the Croats happy with these decisions? Is this a result of their lobbying with EU and uh, US partners? Quite, quite, quite openly so, yes. Uh, uh, in Zagreb, uh, Prime Minister Andrei Plenković has been actually uh, uh, openly uh, uh, praising the decision and claiming credit for, for, for delivering it uh, for the Croat people in Bosnia and uh, in front of his constituencies and voters uh, within Croatia itself. Um, and uh, by, by uh, all accounts, uh, this is certainly not uh, everything that the uh, Croats and Bosnia wanted, but uh, they certainly seem satisfied uh, with what they have gotten from the international community at this point. Given these recent developments, uh, do you believe that the EU will step in and grant finally Bosnia's the candidate status? Honestly, um, the candidate status still uh, requires that uh, 
uh, I forget what number of the 14 uh, points that the EU has set out uh, uh, for uh, the Bosnian government to meet uh, be met. Um, we've heard privately that the number is not that all 14 need to be met before uh, before the uh, uh, the candidate status is granted. I, I suspect, however, that uh, a passage of the electoral law is the sine qua non of um, uh, of actually getting candidate status. So uh, it's and that just maybe leads us to a final point on the OHR decision. It is uh, an imposition of uh, these measures at this point, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are meant to be temporary and for uh, to supposedly create an opportunity for the different parties to now uh, come to some kind of agreement to make the electoral law uh, actually, you know, democratically legitimate. Um, again, whether that's going to play out that way, I have my doubts, um, but let's see. Uh, maybe there is hope that after something like this, uh, you will get kind of uh, some kind of deal making if passions die down. Um, we've uh, uh, we've already seen signs that that is not going to be the case, and we're going to get back to uh, you know some pretty hardball uh, ethnic politics going forward, which uh, I think critics of the OHR's decision would say, perhaps rightly, was to be expected. Nevertheless, um, you know. Uh, Bosnia is going to have to change its constitution at some point somehow, and it's not going to be done for them by the West. And that is going to involve having a serious compromise discussion between the parties um, that uh, will not be able to be imposed. And it's not going to just happen because uh, we think it's right uh, one way or the other. Uh, compromise is difficult and democracy is a uh, ultimately a process of uh, midwifing painful compromises. Damir, thank you for this first reaction on Bosnia's elections. Thank you for watching us. You can follow at AC Europe on Twitter. You can watch us on YouTube and as a podcast.